Here is a graph. It happens to be the complete graph on three vertices, which we call K3. In a previous lesson, we introduced vertex covers, and I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson. Recall that a vertex cover is a set of vertices so that every edge in the graph is incident with at least one vertex in the cover. So the cover is said to cover all edges of the graph or to simply cover the graph. If it's a vertex cover, it's made up of vertices and it's covering edges. So for an example, in this graph, maybe we call these vertices A, B, and C. Is the set, well, that was a very bad set bracket, is the set containing just the vertex A, a vertex cover? The answer is no. This is covering this edge between C and A, and it's covering this edge, A, B. They're both incident with this vertex A, but it's not covering this edge, C, B. So in order to make this a vertex cover, we have to include either the vertex C or the vertex B, or we could include both of them, but let's just go ahead and include the vertex B. So there we have a vertex cover of K3. And this happens to be a minimum vertex cover, which is often what we're most interested in. It is a vertex cover with as few vertices as possible. There's no way to cover this graph with fewer than two vertices. Since the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover is two, we say that the vertex covering number of K3 denoted beta of the graph is equal to two. And you might notice that's one less than the order of the graph. It's one less than the number of vertices. And of course, when we introduce characteristics like this, like independence numbers and vertex covering numbers, we're very interested in finding those numbers for common families of graphs. So we may ask, is this property true in general for complete graphs? Is the vertex covering number, the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover, for every complete graph, one less than its number of vertices? Just for kicks, we might check out a couple other small examples. What about the vertex covering number of the complete graph K2? If this pattern holds, then this should equal one. That's one less than the number of vertices in K2. Does that seem right? Well, that's K2, and yeah, we could cover this graph by just picking either one of those vertices, and we do need to get at least one of them because we do have this edge to cover. So the minimum uh, vertex covering number of K2 is one. All right, well, let's go all the way down to K1. Vertex covering number of K1, if the pattern holds, it should be one less than the number of vertices, which is zero, zero. Does that make any sense? Well, K1 looks like this. It's a single vertex with no edges. So yeah, technically speaking, the empty set does cover all edges of the graph. And so we could say that the covering number of K1 is zero. Although oftentimes you'll find that we just don't consider covering numbers of empty graphs graphs with no edges because there's nothing to cover. But we could say this is true. And so we may conjecture that in general, the vertex covering number of a complete graph is one less than its order. Let's see if we can prove it. All right, so I wrote our conjecture up here at the top, cleaned the board so we've got some more room to work with. In order to prove that the covering number of Kn is n minus one, we've got to do two things, and you don't want to forget these two things. We've got to prove that n minus one vertices is sufficient to cover the graph, so we can get a vertex cover with n minus one vertices, but we also need to prove that n minus one vertices is necessary, that we can't cover Kn with fewer than n minus one vertices. Let's first address the sufficiency question. Let's just say we take an arbitrary set of vertices from Kn, and we'll take n minus one vertices. So V1, V2, all the way through some n minus one vertex Vn minus one. 
If we just take n minus one vertices from a complete graph, is this guaranteed to be a vertex cover? Well, in order to answer that question, we'd have to consider an arbitrary edge from the graph. We could call an arbitrary edge VI, VJ. It's defined by its n vertices, so just call it VI, VJ. In order for this to be a vertex cover, we need to be sure that at least one of these vertices, one of these n vertices of our arbitrary edge is in this set. And yeah, we can be absolutely positive about that because this set contains every vertex in the graph except for one. Now there are two n vertices for any arbitrary edge. So at most, one of these vertices is not in the set, but certainly at least one of them is. And so this set will cover every edge. And again, that's because there's only one vertex that's not in this set, right? Because it has n minus one vertices. So when we pick an edge, which is basically the same as picking two vertices, and remember every two vertices are adjacent in a complete graph, we pick two vertices to define one of these arbitrary edges, and at most one of them isn't in this set because this set has every vertex except for one. So definitely, if we take n minus one vertices from a complete graph, we will get a vertex cover. So n minus one vertices is sufficient, but is it necessary? Well, let's say instead of having n minus one vertices in our set, we have k vertices. So we go from v1 to v2, all the way up to some kth vertex in the set vk, where k is less than or equal to n minus two, which is another way of saying that it's less than n minus one. So is it possible for this set to be a vertex cover of a complete graph with n vertices? Turns out it's not. We just have to remember the definition of a complete graph that every pair of vertices is joined by an edge. Now here, our set of vertices is missing at least two vertices from the graph because the cardinality of the set is less than or equal to n minus two. So at most it has n minus two vertices, which means it's missing at least two vertices. So from VK, we could say there's also some vertex in the graph vk plus one, and there's some other vertex in the graph, vk plus two. And there very well could be other vertices as well that are not in this set. Now, by knowing we have two vertices not in this set, well, this is an edge, right? Because this is a complete graph, which means any two vertices we pick are joined by an edge. So here we have an edge whose end vertices are not in this set. And so this is an edge that's not covered by the set, and so it's not a vertex cover. If we're missing more than one vertex from a complete graph in one of these vertex sets, well, those at least two vertices that aren't in the set will all be joined by edges that aren't covered by the set. And so certainly you're not gonna be able to cover a complete graph if you're missing more than a single vertex in your set. And so not only is n minus one vertices sufficient to cover the graph, but it's definitely necessary. Again, if you're missing two or more vertices, they're gonna be joined by edges that you're not covering. And so that's why indeed the vertex covering number of the complete graph on n vertices is n minus one.